This robot is clearing mines in eastern Ukraine. The country is now home to one of the largest minefields in the world. It's dangerous and slow work to remove and destroy mines by hand. Drones and robots are helping speed up the clearance, but all the while armies on both sides continue to lay them, in some places up to 500 meters deep. Russian minefields have slowed the Ukrainian counteroffensive, but in farming areas freed from Russian occupation in 2022, they're still wrecking lives. <laughs> Many farmers, desperate to revive their broken businesses, have taken things into their own hands by deploying remote-controlled tractors to detonate mines. We went to Ukraine's eastern Kharkiv region to join a demining team and meet the farmers still counting the cost of this war's concealed killers. This part of eastern Ukraine was overrun by Russian troops in 2022. But as they were beaten back, they mined the area to slow the Ukrainian counterattack. It's now the job of landmine charity, the Halo Trust, to detect and remove the hundreds of devices still here. Once a device is detected, the grass needs to be cut before the slow work of unearthing can begin. Before the war, Valeria Shachutska used to be a professional horse rider performing tricks in shows. She retrained as a D-miner. We live in Ukraine, where there is a war, and the danger of us is expected to be around. And we be safe. Мабуть, це таки допомагає, бо ну, е, ти маєш відчувати. This combine harvester hit two Russian anti-tank mines in August 2022. Every yellow post marks a spot where a mine has been removed. Було знято 50 противотранспортних мін в пластиковому корпусі. The dangers are not just mines below ground but tripwires and unexploded munitions. І на жаль, ті як і технічно забруднені вогневими предметами, так і заміновані. Були склади з боєкомплектами у нашого ворога, і вони його плотно заміновували, щоб не було там якихось диверсій або проходу контратак. Denise Prokopets runs a large farming business across a swathe of land that was occupied by Russian troops in 2022. He wants to get the land back into use as soon as possible, so he and his workers are taking matters into their own hands. These are remote-controlled tractors pulling heavy metal rollers. If they hit a mine, it should explode at a safe distance from any people. He normally harvests wheat, sunflowers, chickpeas and winter grains, but he's only been able to use one-sixth of his land since the Russians were driven back because of the threat of mines. These are supposed to be lower-risk fields, but they still found eight mines in recent months. There are also lots of fragments of metal, shrapnel and missiles. This is a cluster bomb, a shell capable of scattering a large number of bomblets over a wide area. There is a chance some of them never exploded. This tractor on another farm has the rollers fitted to the front. It's also remote controlled. Ми зайнялися цим чисто з того, що сроки сівби вже підійшли, а ми нічого не можемо делати, тому що ДСНС дуже зайнятий. Teams working by hand can clear anything from 100 to 250 square meters a day. Rudimentary solutions like this are helping to get farmers back on their land, but they don't come with a safety guarantee. The Ukrainian army deploys its own demining sappers to clear minefields on the front line. 
they often work with handheld metal detectors. But there are other ways. This is a line charge, a string of explosives thrown out across a minefield to clear a path for tanks and infantry. Drones and robotic vehicles rigged with cameras and sensors are also being used to detect and destroy mines. Both Russia and Ukraine have been accused of breaking internationally recognized rules of war by using anti-personnel mines, which are designed to kill people, not just take out armored vehicles. But of course they continue to maim and kill long after wars are over. Two deminers from the Halo Trust were injured and one died in an explosion in the southern Kherson region in September 2023. Ukraine estimates that mines and other dangerous war debris litter up to a third of its total territory. For the villagers and farmers that live in areas formerly occupied by Russian forces, the mines are a daily threat. Viktor Ivanovich lives a few miles from the Halo Trust mine clearance site. He used to work as a tractor and excavator driver. He's now bedbound. He was clearing tree branches from a field when his tractor hit an anti-tank mine. The blast badly injured his legs and shrapnel hit him in the face and arms. He will walk again, but it'll take time. Everyone living around here knows someone who has either been killed or injured by mines. Across Ukraine, it's estimated that 20,000 people have received amputations since the start of the war. This is likely to be the highest number in Europe since World War I. And of the estimated 260 civilians so far killed by mines, most have been in some way involved in agriculture. Dennis managed to flee the area before the Russians showed up at his farm in March 2022. When he came back in the September, the place was a wreck. Grain storage barns had been shelled, animals slaughtered. The farm had 70,000 animals before the occupation. It lost 90%. Але навіть важко уявити, що тут було, коли тут стояли свині, тому що це касетні, як ви бачите, уламки всі літять, тварини загиблі, тут заходиш, стоїть візг, там до стаї навіть більше тварин вже мертві. Those that weren't shot or killed in shelling starved. The electricity was cut so the feeding and water systems broke. Як заїхали зетки, їхали по цій дорогі, вони туди сюди мотались. 
плохие были времена. Но... Дай Бог, чтобы она не вернулась, не дай Бог. Dennis estimates the loss of livestock, damage to machinery and buildings to be about $15 million. But that doesn't include years of lost revenue from the fields they can't use. So there are still unexpected losses, even to imagine what a sum. We believe in our ZSU, we believe in the victory, so we will be invested in it. The damage done to Ukraine's farming sector runs into the tens of billions of dollars, and it could take decades to rebuild, demine and decontaminate the land. Even if farms can grow crops, there's the problem of exporting them, as Russia continues to attack Ukraine's ports on the Black Sea and disrupt shipping routes. Frontline farms are of course suffering more than most. With so much land too dangerous to cultivate, Nature has begun to rewild fields, turning zones either side of the front line green. Yuri Vovchenko's farm is not far from Denise's. He remembers the day the Russians came like it was yesterday. 3 березня. Тут було забито повністю техніка і гради, і танки, і БТР, і стояли окремі машини, бо У них було одне питання, чому, коли ми проїжджаємо по селі, нас ніхто не зустрічає. Для нас це так, ну, ми тут як будто не освободитель, а захватчик. Here 2000 head of cattle were reduced to 228 in a matter of weeks. Only 8 of 68 sheep survived. The majority were hit by grad rockets or shot. Yuri fled the village with his family on March the 5th, 2022. The cows that survived weren't milked for months, so their supply dried up. When Yuri tried moving the remaining cows to new pastures in the September, some died after stepping on mines. He is slowly building back his herd and has started making cheese, even ice cream. A kind of barter system has emerged in this once occupied zone. Yuri trades milk for building materials and hay for cattle. Те, що ми зараз там питаємося вижити і робимо, це ми так, скажімо, в 19 столітті з цими бачками, з цими молокопроводами. Скажем, збитки нанесено на рівні 1.5 мільярда гривень нашому підприємству. 1.5 мільярда. Це і техніка, це будівлі, це неубраних там більше 2000 зимних культур і жита, і тритикалі, і пшениці і так далі. His cattle barns are slowly turning into chicken sheds. They don't have the time or the money to bring back large-scale cattle farming. These chickens are four months old and have started laying their first eggs. Many people never return to the area, but Yuri sees bringing his farm back to life as important as fighting on the front line. <laughs> з передовою воїнами, і вони, до речі, дуже багато мені розповідають про те, що якщо ви, каже, зложите тут руки і нічого працювати не будете, не будете управляти дахи, не будете розвивати, розміновувати самі, то, каже, тут, що ми на передовій, це значить все зря. Значить, ми виборюємо тут, свою, боремося за свою землю, боремося за свої сім'ї, а ви повинні працювати, як ніколи. 